Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and it's finally time to add more tanks to this tank. So, in today's video, we're gonna talk about going from two tanks in here to five. Should be really cool. A little over a year ago, when this tank was at its peak, I had nine tanks in here, and it worked really good for quite a long time but something happened to it and I lost most of my tanks. Um, I think it was internal parasites. Um, a couple of them got that kind of pinched in belly thing. A couple died and they looked perfectly fine the day before they were fine. The hybrid black tang got HLLE. So I've just let everything go for a while. The reality is, is since everything bad was happening to the tank, I let it run its course, at least up here. I did try moving some tanks downstairs and moving fish around. And the reality is of the original tanks I had, I have two a lot. If you're really interested in what happened to the other tanks, go through my old videos. There's just too much to really cover for this video. But at this point, I have a Flamingi in here and I have a Blue Tang in here. These are two fantastic fish and the blue tang I've had for seven and a half years. So it's an old tang. I'm really happy to still have it. Tangs are easily my favorite type of fish for a reef aquarium. They're absolutely beautiful, rivaling the best angels on the market. But for a reef tank, they have so many benefits. Unlike an angel, which might eat your corals, for the most part, tangs are reef safe. They also do a job. Most tangs will eat some sort of algae. Some are better at it than others, but they're worker fish. You put these beautiful animals in your tank and they will help keep your tank clean. In fact, I'm hoping that's how I rid this tank up here of algae. One of the big problems with tangs though is if you wanna run multiples in a tank, it can be a challenge. Tangs have aggression issues. They, for the most part, will do fine with other fish. But, tangs have a tendency to fight. So, to begin with, let's go look at the computer and let's talk about tang geniuses and help you pick the tangs for your tank. To pick out tangs, I've gone to Live Aquaria's website, not so much that I'm a huge supporter of Live Aquaria. It's just something I think everybody's familiar with. So what we're looking at are a list of a bunch of different tangs. And in fact, let's bring them all up. And the main thing we're looking at are the different species of tangs. But what really matters in tang selection is the genus. So that's the family that the fish is from. So this yellow tang has the common name of yellow tang. The genus is Zebrasoma. The species name is Flavensis. And I might have even mangled that. And you're going to notice I'm going to mangle, mangle a bunch of the names here. But Zebrasoma is a really cool fish. These will be your yellow tangs, gem tangs, purple tangs, the sailfins, the desertinis. These are great fish. But if you try to mix a yellow tang and a gem tang, there's a high likelihood that they're going to fight. They look super similar and they're the same genus. So if you want to mix tangs, an easy rule of thumb is to pick different genuses. So this yellow tang is Zebrasoma. And then the one I purchased is the Acantherius powdered brown. So powder brown, powder blue, you can both, you can see they're both Acantherius. So Acantherius is more likely to work well with a yellow tang than a yellow tang is to work with a gem tang. Different genuses, even though Acantherius do have a reputation for being a little more aggressive than other tangs. A couple of Acantherius I would completely avoid are the clown tangs and the show hole tangs. These guys are just too aggressive, and if you want to keep them, I would say put them in their own species-specific tank. Design your tank around these fish if you want to keep them. Also in the Acantherius is the Achilles, which I think everybody absolutely loves. Acantherius are also thought to be a little harder tang to keep. But there's a bunch you can choose from, like the Caribbean Blue Tang. Those are awesome. 
Um, Orange Shoulders are great Acantherius tanks. Um, yeah, just a bunch of really nice fish in Acantherius. The next genus we're going to talk about are going to be the bristle tooth tanks. And this, I'm not even pretend like I can say it. Centochanthus. Yeah. Anyways, that's a chevron tang. Um, I've had a yellow eye coal tang in the past. Same genus, right? That's what we're looking for. So we can mix genuses. For my tank, I have the two meaning. So bristle tooth tank. Bristle tooths are great algae cleaners, usually a little on the smaller side. And if usually less aggressive. These tangs here are some of the ones I recommend the most. And you can get some super amazing ones like the white tail bristle tooth. Fantastic fish. So next up let's talk about Paracantherius. These are basically in the hobby going to be your blue tanks. Blue tangs are cool because they're a different genus and can be mixed with a lot of fish. You put two blue tangs together, you're likely to have aggression issues. You mix them with a different genus, you're going to have a good likelihood of success. And of course, like I said, you mix them with something like the show hole and you might have problems. And then the final genus we're going to talk about is Naso. So in my tank, I've got a big Lamingi. But there's a bunch of nasos out there, but nasos tend to be really big fish. So the unicorn tang, flamingis, and of course your true nasos, like the blonde naso or your standard naso tang. These are usually not very aggressive, but they get huge. But I still wouldn't mix genuses or wouldn't put the same genus in the same tank. So like a naso and a flamingi, I wouldn't do it unless we're talking about a really big tank. So there we go. Brief introduction to picking fish based on genus. So there's been a lot of talk about tang aggression and managing it. And that's really what we got to do. So to set myself up for success before putting the tangs into this tank, let's talk about what we're doing. First, I've got three tangs going in the tank. Part of why this has taken me so long to put the tangs in the tank is I had to find the right Tang. So here's the, the two tangs in the frag tanks. They're not real interested in me filming. Now they're a little shy right now, but basically frags are extra out of here so I can catch the fish. Um, these two guys are going upstairs. We've got the Tumini, we've got the yellow. They've been down here for about 10 months and it's about time to put them upstairs. And here's my latest tang. It's a powder brown. These are absolutely beautiful. I saw this guy at the store. I went looking for a powder brown. So what I wanted, they had him at the fish crew. Absolutely beautiful fish. You know, I checked him over. I didn't see signs of ick. I didn't see any damage to the skin. The eyes were nice and clear. He was swimming around right up front, super friendly. As you can see now, he's out. He's not afraid of anything. This is gonna be a great fish. My only fear is he might be aggressive. I had the Tumini and I had the yellow tank for quite a while, but until this tank was ready for more tangs, I was just not putting any more in. So I was patient, I waited, and now I feel like the fish are healthy enough, the tank is healthy enough that I can put the tangs in the tank and be okay. And then I bought that powder brown. It's a different genus than everything else going in here, so that should help. So we're gonna have five tangs in here with five different genuses, and we should be okay. So the first thing we're doing to manage the aggression is we're putting three tangs in at once. That's gonna make it a lot harder for the two tangs in this tank who already have established territories to keep track of all the newcomers. If I put one fish in there, it'd be real easy for them to single them out and beat them up. But with three, it's gonna be three times harder for them to do that. We're starting to get closer to evening. I'm about two hours before the lights go out. So I'm shooting this part of the video now. But I've got two tangs in this tank. We've got the blue tang and the Vlamingi tang. The Vlamingi is the big one you see there. Absolutely gorgeous fish. And what you saw right there is about the most aggression I've ever seen out of him. Super peaceful, awesome fish. So the reason I'm doing this now is I'm gonna put these fish in tonight once the lights go out. 
To me, it's important to put the fish in when the lights go out to keep that aggression down. We'll give these guys 12 hours or so to adjust to each other with the lights off where they can't find each other. So that'll give them a little bit of a buffer tonight. And last but not least, before these lights go out tonight, I am gonna feed all the tanks. They're gonna be fat, they're gonna be full, there will be less aggression with full fish than with hungry fish. So the first thing we gotta do is feed this tank. All right, lights are almost to the moonlight setting, so it's time to put those fish in. I'm doing it now strictly for video purposes. If I wasn't trying to film this, I'd probably wait until it was as dark as it was gonna get, but it's close enough. It's really not gonna be a problem. All right, here we are two mornings later. Everybody's out, everybody's doing well. Tumini's been a little bit shy, but the aggression's been minimal. When I first put the tangs in the tank, the flamingi basically opened his big sail up on the back and went up to a couple fish and basically showed the tank who was boss. But that was about it for aggression. So far, so good. So fingers crossed this tank does well in the long term with these five tangs in here. I think I'm pretty set up for success. Um, when the tangs get a little more used to the environment, I'll get you guys some more close, off sh close up shots. But for now, I think the tank's looking great. I love having multiple tangs in here again. We're up to five. I'm really happy with the species I have. I've got a nice mix of genus. So far it's peaceful, it's calm, it's beautiful. It's exactly what I want, so I think I nailed it. What do you call a fish without an eye? A fish. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.